So this syllabus point is all about how we draw dot and cross diagrams for covalent substances that just have single bonds in them. The examples that I'm going to use today are Cl2, chlorine gas, uh, water, H2O, and also CH4, which is methane. There are other examples at the bottom here uh, that you can do in your own time just to prove that you have got this absolutely nailed at the end. Enjoy! What we're going to look at is the bonding between Cl2, that's between two chlorine atoms that look like this. What you need to remember is that both of these chlorines are aiming for a full outer shell. That means both of them having eight electrons in their outer shell. Whereas last time in the ionic bond, I could just move one electron from one side to the other, I can't do that this time. It doesn't work. For a covalent bond, what they do is they share electrons, and these two electrons in the middle here, the unpaired ones, will be shared between two chlorines. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to show this by drawing the two chlorine atoms overlapping with each other. And what that represents is this part in the centre here represents the shared electrons, electrons that are shared between both chlorines. Now, on the previous piece of paper, we said they were going to share one each. So that means I've got one cross and one dot in this central region. Now, those outer electrons haven't changed at all. I've still got another six dots around the side, and I've still got another six crosses around the side. But now, what's special is that if I count how many electrons are in each of these chlorines, including those two in the centre that they're now sharing, each of the two chlorines now has a full outer shell. Each of them has eight, which means that this is now a perfectly drawn dot and cross diagram for Cl2. What you should really be asking is what's holding this together again? What is holding those shared pair of electrons together? Don't forget, electrons are both negative. They should be repelling each other. So why do them being in the same space as each other, why does that cause a bond? The answer is electrostatic attraction again. So electrostatic attraction is an attraction between a positive and a negatively charged species. In this case, it's the electrostatic attraction between the bonded pair of electrons and the nuclei of both of the atoms that are involved in the bond. Right, so let's check out another example and have a look at water. Here's the outer electronic configuration for oxygen and two hydrogens, which is what makes up water. It is a covalent bond. It's between three non-metals in this case, so they're going to share electrons. In each of those bonds, there's going to be one of the electrons from the oxygen and one of the electrons from the hydrogens. Here's a tip for you. Often my students ask me, but how do I know which of those three elements I should put in the center of the diagram? Normally, if you're given a compound that contains more than two atoms, what you can do is you can take the one that you have one of and put it in the middle. So in this case, for example, you've got H2O. That means I've got two hydrogens and one oxygen. The oxygen can go in the middle, and that would be surrounded by as many hydrogens as I have. In this case, that means that I have to draw three overlapping circles and draw a shared pair in each of them. Don't forget that the oxygen started with six electrons, so that means that it still has six, there's still six dots in this diagram, so I can leave them where they were to begin with. If you look at this diagram now and you count how many electrons are in the outer shell of that oxygen, you should be able to see that it's got eight, which is a full octet, makes it very stable. The hydrogen only wants two in its outer shell because that's what is a full outer shell for the first energy shell. So the hydrogens and the oxygen are all happy and all fully complete energy levels. Last one, I promise. Let's look at methane. So this is what the outer shell of a carbon and four hydrogens look like. Remember the tip that the one that you've only got one of goes in the middle, hence why I've drawn the carbon in the center of this diagram. Each hydrogen has to share an electron with the carbon. So I'm going to make sure my circles overlap four times and in each one of them I'm going to put a cross and a dot. 
what you should be able to see, the carbon now has eight electrons in its outer shell, so it's very stable. Each of the hydrogens have a full two electrons in that first electron shell. So in this particular case, this now is completely stable the way I've drawn it.